YTPC. Curmudgeon Piper. Or what's left of it. <laughs> Howdy, folks. Oh, me. What a weekend. A whirlwind, to say the least. Oh. Thought I'd give you a little recap. Before I do that, if you haven't uh, watched yesterday's video, pause here. Go back there and watch that one because I'm getting ready to throw out a uh, uh, spoiler here in a bit. It's only about three minutes long. It won't take you long. So go, stop, go, come back. Go now. I'll give you an elbow shot. Look. Matches. I got matches. Got rid of that damn lame lighter. Okay, are you back? Alright. So a little background. My, uh, the Divine Miss Lee and I, we have uh, three kids, two, two older adult kids, 29, 28, 29 year old son, nearly 29, 28 year old daughter, five year old grandson, and a 16 year old son. My 16 year old is a, is an old soul. He doesn't do much with uh, modern music and things like that. He, he knows about as many, if not more, lyrics to 80s pop songs than I do. We raised him that way. He's got a, what I consider, maybe not to everyone, but for, for, from what I consider, great taste in music. And uh, we had the opportunity this weekend to take him to his first concert. And uh, the artist that he had been wanting to see was Billy Joel. And uh, so we bought uh, tickets to take a road trip up to Philadelphia to see Billy Joel this past Friday night. Fantastic show. Fantastic. Uh, Lee and I have seen him four times before that, I think, over the years. We've been here 20 years or so. We've seen him four times. By the way, I'm smoking the Graybo Omega with small batch. You'll see this in the video from yesterday, too. So when you see the video, when you come back, you go, hey, hey I know where he got that from. I'll tell you about it in a minute. So, uh, anyhow, about 4.30... about burn out. I'll pack another bowl. About 4.30 Friday morning we hit the road from here in north central North Carolina headed up to uh, Philadelphia and I'm going to tell you it was, uh, it, was a, it was a good trip up uh surprisingly good I mean we uh, we hit DC probably around 9 30 10 o'clock somewhere in there we made stops it was it was a long day driving but uh, we made a few stops hit DC about 9 30 I was expecting typical DC traffic backups and all that didn't really see any of that we uh, made it up and around DC pretty quickly no problems. Uh, so that was a great blessing because I'm uh, going to have to take a pill. <laughs> I actually did take a pill, come to think of it. Anyway, 
Um, pardon me. I'm going to switch pipes. I'm going to head over to my volcano. Uh, anyway, the toughest part of the drive, quite honestly, we had a hotel. We got a hotel in downtown city center area of, of Philadelphia. Now, I've driven in fairly large cities. I haven't driven in places like New York or like that, but so I'm, 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 you know, fairly knowledgeable about how larger city downtowns are, you know, work as far as driving. But Philadelphia, man, I hope I don't offend anybody, but I don't know how in the hell y'all navigate your way around downtown Philly. I really don't. I'd... Philadelphia did not, when they, when they planned their streets, whatever they did, did not uh, take into account that there would be delivery drivers and big trucks trying to navigate downtown as well. And so the, the some of the side streets in Philly are just just barely wide enough. If they're not one-way streets, they're, 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 if they're two-way streets, they're, they're just barely big enough to get two cars down and, and be able to navigate the street. Just barely big enough for two. Well, you have delivery drivers and big box trucks who will pull into these very narrow streets and decide to just stop and park there to do their deliveries or whatever it is they have to do. And so you're sitting and waiting 15, 20, 30 minutes just for them to get their work done so that you can go about your day. And we got literally, literally right around the corner from the hotel and there's a box truck, box truck blocking the street, can't get to the hotel. Just uh, dysfunctional, barely functioning driving system in downtown Philadelphia. So once I uh, got in front of the hotel, I didn't touch the van anymore after that. I, I went valet all the way. We uh, took the subway down to uh, Citizens Bank Stadium, Phillies Baseball Stadium, for the concert. So uh, my son got his first ride on the subway, which he really enjoyed. He loved it. He loved being downtown. He thought it was fantastic. And, and it was, it was, it, you know, it was, it was enjoyable. But I don't think I'm going to try to drive down there again. Just, you know. uh, concert was fantastic. If you're not a Billy Joel fan, you know, I get it. Some people can take him or leave him. We are. Um, best part of the show, he did, he did, of course, all of his hits. He tells you at the beginning of the show, guess what? I haven't written any new shit and, excuse me, stuff in uh, almost 30 years, so we're just playing all the old stuff. And that's what he did. Uh, best part of the show, though, as, as it was Memorial Day, he, uh, he has a song off of one of his albums. Uh, the album came out in 84, I believe. It was called The Nylon Curtain. And there's a song on that album called Good Night Saigon. That's not uh, standard in his uh, set lists. Uh, he usually does it uh, particularly around military remembrance, uh, holidays, that kind of thing. Uh, but he does that song, and uh, if you've never heard it, I, I encourage you to go listen to it. But he brings out uh, servicemen and veterans on stage with him during the song. So, uh, so we went to the show. Fantastic show. Uh, that was a very moving part of the of the show. Was that song, and then the entire stadium at the end of the song started chanting "USA, USA." So that was really, really fun to see. If uh, he puts on a great show, and uh, my son has mentioned ever since then how great of a time he had so uh, and Lee and I had a great time with him uh, so
So if you get an opportunity, I, I recommend it. Uh, so anyway, we had about, I guess, probably a good, what, nine or ten hours total of driving time on Friday. Got to the hotel, checked in for a couple hours, hopped the subway down to the show. We got back in from the from the show uh, probably around 11.30 that night. Uh, went to bed, woke up fairly early, did a little walking around downtown uh, just to see some of the things and uh, check out a couple of things. And uh, then we hit the road, uh, headed over to Whitehall, Pennsylvania, just, just outside of Allentown. And uh, I had reached out to uh, one of our fellow YTPC members, presenters, uh, back in January probably, and uh, let him know that we were coming up for the show and wanted to know if he was available. I'd like to do a pipe meetup, and he was more than ready and willing. And so we found a, uh, he found a brick and mortar in, uh, in Whitehall called New Village Tobacco. Great little brick and mortar. They had some fantastic tins of, of good stuff. They had some Dunhill stuff, uh, some GLP, some uh, Cornell and Deal, uh, Aaron Moore I saw, uh, just some, uh, a, a good, I picked up, picked up a, what did I pick up? Picked up a tin of plum pudding, which I haven't broken into yet. Anyway, so I met Pick and Piper yesterday, Chris, and uh, had a fantastic meetup with him and his son Drake. They had just played a uh, show uh, the night before, and then were picking with some with some of their folks earlier that morning in Wind Gap. So they drove over from uh, Wind Gap, and we drove over from Philly, and. Uh, Folks, if you have the opportunity, and I said this in the video yesterday, if you have the opportunity to do a pipe meetup with anybody here in this community, I highly recommend it. Uh, great guy. Man, we, we had a blast. Uh, I'm, I'm typically a introverted, antisocial kind of guy. I don't know if y'all know that about me, but I am. And so uh, we sat and, uh, and we talked for about two, two and a half hours or so. Uh, the Divine Miss Lee and my son, they went to uh, did some little shops and things nearby and uh, just kind of hung out for a while while I met with uh, Pick and Piper and, and his son, Drake. And uh, just a fantastic day. So then it was time to hit the road on the way back. So we, I guess we got out of Whitehall uh, about 2.30. Uh, made various stops along the way. Uh, the original plan had been to spend the night and stay until today, Sunday, and come back today. But uh, the Divine Miss Lee has taken a new job, and so she had to work today. So we uh, weren't able to stay that extra night. Uh, so anyway, we uh, hit the road. <laughs> we got back in last night about right at 11 o'clock. So put close to a 1,000 miles on the van. Did about a grand total of, I don't know, 16 to 18 hours of driving. Uh, and my son's a new driver, so I did all the driving. Uh, uh, I like to, uh, I, I do, I prefer to do the driving anyway, so uh, I can navigate traffic and things better. Uh, anyway, so we got back last night about 11 o'clock, man, and uh, crashed pretty hard. But uh, anyway, what a what a fantastic getaway! What a fantastic first show for for our son. Thoroughly enjoyed that family time away, and uh, then then to get to hang out with uh, Pick and Piper and, and Pick and Piper Jr. for a uh, for a little while was was just uh, it was fantastic. Uh, so anyway, uh, the video is up to 15 minutes, and I try to keep them under that. But uh, I want to say again, because I'm, I'm going to take tomorrow off from posting uh, in remembrance. Uh, I hope that 
those of you on here who are serving or have served, I hope you have a blessed day, a day of remembrance. Um, we plan to, and uh, enjoy it, folks. Man, enjoy it. And just, if you have the opportunity, get together with a YT piece here. It is a joy, truly a joy. Um, but I, I, I am crazy for putting in 18 hours of driving. <laughs> but that's what you do. You folks be well. Be humble. Be grateful for all that you have. Have a blessed Memorial Day, and I'll see you again soon.